say, Mayor, who can I talk to about getting my blazer pressed? Uh, well, I guess Thelma in the wardrobe department. No, Thelma's leaving at 6, and I have to have a press after my show. I'm taking my blazer home with me tonight. Oh, what's the matter, Ted? Lose your pajamas? <laughs> no, it's just that I'm doing a guest shot in a very early morning show, and uh, I need a press after I do the news. Well, listen, I'll ask Thelma if she'll stay late and press it for you. Oh, gee, thanks a lot, Mayor. What uh, early morning show are you doing? No, I'm just doing an ad-lib talk show. I'm very good at those ad-lib talks things, you know. No, what are you going to talk about, Ted? Well, I thought I'd talk about... <laughs> then I'd, uh... <laughs> well, there's, uh... And I could, uh... Well, you know. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm looking for Mary Richards. Uh, I'm Mary Richards. Uh, hi. Hi. I'm Betty Bowerchuk. Hi. Hi. You're the associate producer of the 6 o'clock news with Ted Baxter, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, Mr. Baxter is going to be our guest star tomorrow morning, and, uh, well, I, I know how busy and important he is, so maybe you can answer a few questions for me. You, you know, so he'll feel more comfortable on our show. Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, does he like chocolate milk? Um, yeah, I, I guess so. Oh, what about cake and ice cream? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, would he mind being hit in the face with a pie? <laughs> Excuse me, uh, what show is this for, anyway? The Chuckles the Clown show. Oh. You mean Ted's going to be interviewed by Chuckles the Clown? Uh-huh. The, the boys and girls love to hear about the different kinds of jobs there are. And we think it's going to be our biggest show since the fireman brought his Dalmatian. Well, uh, I, I tell you, uh, Betty, I think Ted might find it a little undignified, you know, being hit in the... with a... You know, not that he's not a good sport, it's just that... Well, you know, he is the anchor man. Uh. Mary, talk to you a minute. Yeah. Excuse yeah. us. What are you doing? We may never get this chance again. Oh, Murray, I can't. No, you can't, but Chuckles can. And why should we stop him? It would be pretty funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, we, we can just forget about the pie. It's just all his other guests. Well, if all his other guests get the pie, I think Ted would be offended if he didn't. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> uh, is there anything else I can help you with? Well, I know the boys and girls will ask for some photographs of Mr. Baxter. Do you think you could spare uh, some? Sure. How long have you been with Chuckles? All my life. He's my father. <laughs> Well, what's it like having a clown for a fun? <laughs> well, what's it like, uh, you know, living with a clown? <laughs> Here are the pictures. I have more in my desk. Excuse me. Oh, wow, is he ever handsome. Uh, Mer, I've been reading over some of this copy. I made a few changes. Oh, th that's him, isn't it? Ah, uh, him, yes. Oh, look at him reading. Well, I could just stand here all day and watch him. But, but I, I can see how busy you all are, so I'll be going. Uh, thank you again, Mary. I, I really appreciate it. Not at all. Would you like me to autograph those for you? Uh, oh, uh, well, they, they already are autographed. Oh, no, they're just rubber stamped. If you'd like a more personal one, I'd be happy to trace over it for you. Oh. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Betty Bowerchuk. Uh, how do you spell that? B-O-W. No, I meant Betty. <laughs> Does it end with an E or with a Y? Why? Why? Because I want to spell it right, that's why. <laughs> no, 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 no. Betty with a Y. Huh. Betty Bowerchuk. What a lovely name. That's Canadian, isn't it? <laughs> So. There you go. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure, I'm sure. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning at seven. Tomorrow at seven wouldn't miss it. <laughs> Who is she? That's Chuckles the Clown's daughter. No kidding. She sure is a lot better looking than he is. <laughs> Dear Mr. Baxter, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed your appearance on the Chuckles the Clown Show, especially when you got hit in the face with the pie. It would really make the news a lot more fun if you could do that at the end of the 6 o'clock news every night. No, 
Well, who would come up with a silly suggestion like that? I don't know. It's just signed MLS. M. Murray L. Slaughter. <laughs> it's my first fan letter. Oh. <laughs> Has anyone seen Ted Baxter lately? Uh, well, according to the last rating, I'm in I... person. I'm aware that nobody sees him on TV. <laughs> you know, it's funny he doesn't hang around here as much as he used to. <sighs> That's too bad. Because I miss him. You do? Yeah. I miss him. Because, Mary, I've been upstairs in the station manager's office for two hours. For three minutes of those two hours, I was being told what a great job I've been doing. For the rest of the time, I wasn't. <laughs> One hour and 57 minutes, Mary, I sat there and took it. And all that time, a pressure was building up inside me, kind of like steam in a boiler. Now, normally when I get this way, Baxter's around and I can let it out on him. In short bursts, or on occasion, one big blast. Now, with him not around, I can't let it out. Mary, I could hurt myself. Mr. Grant, you, you want me to try him uh, at home? No, it doesn't work on the phone. I gotta see his face. When he gets here, tell him to get his face into my office. Marge, hi, listen, uh, when you see Ted Baxter, would you... Oh, yeah? When? Huh. Thank you. What? Marge said that Ted came in at 7.30 this morning. I wonder when... Ted! Where did you get the mustache? Oh, you mean this one? Yeah. Oh, it's just a temporary until the real one grows in underneath. <laughs> How do you like it? Oh, well, it's uh, very nice. Makes me feel like I'm with it, you know? What do you think, Mert? <laughs> I like it better on your hand than on your face. <laughs> Pretty clever, eh? You know, it takes most people a month to grow a mustache like this. But with this, I can look like this right away. Then in a month, I'll have a real one underneath that looks just like this. And when I take this off, I'll have all that, and that'll look just like this. Uh, Ted. <laughs> Don't marry, he may repeat it. <laughs> Lou was looking for you, Ted. Uh, tell him I'll catch him later. Uh, I've got a very important meeting upstairs. Say, Mayor, can I borrow your rose? My rose? Your rose. Yeah, sure. Thanks. I'll buy you a real one tomorrow. Uh, Ted, that is a real one. It is? Gee, it looks so pretty, I thought it was plastic. <laughs> Gee, isn't nature amazing? To be able to make a flower as good as a factory. <laughs> and then, Ted asked if he could borrow my rose. Your rose? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Why would anyone want to borrow a rose? Maybe he's decorating a tiny little float for the New Year's Day parade. <laughs> it's not the only weird thing he's doing, either. Did you see the news tonight? Oh, yeah. Weird. But what did you think of the mustache? Very sexy. But you know, Mayor, um, was it my TV set or my imagination? About halfway through the show, did it, uh, tilt? Yeah. <laughs> That was uh, kind of unfortunate. Uh, what happened was that Ted sneezed during one of the commercial breaks, and, uh, well, nobody noticed it until it was too late. Hey, Mayor, I bet I know why Ted's been acting weird. Yeah? Why? He's in love. Ted in love? Oh, I don't think so. Mary, please, will you take my word for it? You're talking to the expert on men falling in love. With uh, other women, of course. <laughs> when a guy starts acting weird, tries to look sexy, and borrows a rose, he's either in love or trying to stay out of the army. The Dayton Rhinos won the Central Division Football Championship last night, and 37,000 deliriously happy fans celebrated their victory, setting fires, turning over cars, and breaking every window in the city hall. I wonder what they would have done if they'd lost. It's gone. What's gone? My rose. Somebody took my rose. Your rose, Jane. Well, I just bought a new 
new one this morning. I bet Ted took it. Oh, hey, Mary, I've accused Ted of being a lot of things, but he is no common, ordinary rose thief. Murray, I'm telling you, Ted took it. Look, the little drips go all the way out the door. So did the big one. Do you know something? I think Ted is in love. Ted has been in love ever since he was a baby and saw his reflection in the bath water. I mean, with a girl. No, oh, gee. Hope it isn't anybody nice. No. Baxter around? Uh, well, he was. You just missed him. Oh, the steam, Mary. The steam. Did you just come from another meeting? No, but in ten minutes, I'm going to one. And do you know what the subject of that meeting is, Mary? Ted Baxter's mustache. Don't they like it? They don't know. They haven't tested it yet. How do you test a mustache? Oh, who knows? Who cares? But for two hours, I'm going to have to sit there and hear about it. You want me to try and find him? Oh, yes. Do, do, do. Uh, hi, Mary. Oh, hi. 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 Anyone seen Ted? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, we're looking for him ourselves. Oh, I just wanted to thank him for leaving this on my desk. <laughs> oh, what a shame. It's somebody nice. <laughs> lunch I have ever sat through. I didn't think it was so bad. No, of course not. You had your back to Ted and Betty. I was staring right into their booth. So what were they doing? Rhoda, he obviously took her to that dark restaurant because he didn't want to be seen with her. I mean, did you see what he did when he saw us seeing him with her? How could I? Every time I started to look, you said, don't look, don't look. <laughs> well, he had his arm around her and everything was very cozy. And then he saw us and he, he pushed her away and started treating her like a stranger. I know that feeling. I once had a date do that to me when I ordered steak. You want some coffee? Yeah, a half a cup. I just, I can't figure out why Ted is so uptight about being seen with her. Hey, Mary, I know. I'll bet she's married. Huh? No, I know her. Betty works here at the station. Chuckles the Clown is her father. Betty the Clown. <laughs> Mary, please don't go on with this. This whole thing is getting entirely too sordid. You know, it really is kind of fun watching Ted act like a teenager in love. And Betty has been so happy, you know, just glowing and smiling. <laughs> Crying? <laughs> Betty, what happened? Oh, I, I, I just had the worst lunch I've ever had. And I, I need some girl-type advice. Well, sure. Hi, Mary. Hi, Rhoda. Hi, Betty. What's new? Uh, not the, uh, here, Betty. Come on, let's, uh, we'll go into Mr. Grant's office. Uh, you, you want to sit down? No, no, I, I, I'm too... Oh, Mary, I, I just have to find out. I don't know you, do I? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Rhoda Morgenstern, Betty Bowerchuk. Huh. Bowerchuk? Bowerchuk? Are you related to Bill Bowerchuk from New York City? No. He used to date my sister. Nice guy. Yeah. Uh, so, well, Betty. Well, Mary, don't tell anybody, but well, Ted and I have sort of secretly been going together for, well, almost two weeks now. And, oh, really? Yeah. And, well, I just have to ask somebody, is it true that there's a company policy that two employees can't fall in love? Where did you ever hear a dumb thing like that? Ted told me. Uh, oh, well, uh, uh, maybe I did hear um, something like that. Well, I told him I never heard of that rule. But, but, but he said that if anyone from work sees us together, we'll both be fired. So at the restaurant today, so that nobody would think we were together. He made me pay my own check. <laughs> Betty, Ted does that to everybody. Mary, will you talk to him for me? Uh, about us? Well, Betty, I, you know, I really think it would be better if I didn't, you know, and you did. Oh, please. Carl Bowerchuck. His name wasn't Bill. It was Carl. Are you related to him? No. I'm finished. That's the only Bowerchuck I know. Listen, uh, Betty, I'll tell you what, why don't you come over to my place for dinner tomorrow night and you can talk a little more about it then, huh? Oh, I, I'd like that. Okay. Thanks. Oh, excuse me. Uh, 
good. For a second there, I thought I'd walked into the ladies' room. No, we were, we were just, uh, just leaving. It's gonna work out just perfect, isn't it? <laughs> Come here. Oh, hi, Ted. <laughs> Listen, Ted. What do you think? Of what? My mustache. It's real. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? I told you it would look like this. <laughs> My own grew in. I threw the fake one away. Well, it looks just as real as the fake one did. Thanks. Listen, um, Ted. I wanted to talk to you about Betty. Who? Betty Bowerchuck. Who's that? The girl you have been secretly going with for over two weeks. Oh, that Betty. Is her last name Bauer, Chuck? I didn't know that. Oh, come on. Ted, you know perfectly well what her last name is. Ted, I know about you and Betty. You do? How much do you know? Not much. Good. Ted, listen, I asked Betty to have dinner at my place tomorrow night, and I was wondering if you would like to come, too. Tomorrow night? Uh-huh. Dinner? Mm-hmm. Betty? Yes. What are you having? Ted! <laughs> well, I thought I'd like to bring a nice bottle of something to go with it. Oh, well, no, you don't have to do that. Well, I'll just go to my liquor dealer and pick out something special. Well, thanks. <laughs> no. <laughs> I am? Gee, I better get my watch fixed. According to this, I'm fashionably late. <laughs> uh, well, uh, where's Betty? Oh, she had to work tonight. On Saturday night? No, Chuckles is doing a guest shot at the Mayflower Market. She'll be here as soon as all the candy and the balloons are gone. Oh, good. <laughs> Taste of the bubbly? Oh, here. <laughs> it's not that domestic stuff, either. It's imported from Los Angeles. Oh. Really delicious. Uh, I'll put it on ice, anyway. Everything you say, Mary. Mmm. Oh. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, I, tell you, I just have a few more things to do, and then I'll be finished. Well, go right ahead, Mary. You need any help? No, thanks. Well, I don't mind. Would you like me to shell those peas? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> you know, I used to do this for my mother when I was a kid. Uh. <laughs> I used to do that, too. Uh, I tell you, Ted, it's so crowded in here. What, why don't you just go into the living room? It'll go faster that way. That's what my mother used to say. <laughs> Should I wash these off? No, just give them to me, Ted, and I'll throw them away. She used to say that, too. <laughs> Gee, it was awfully nice of you to invite Betty and me to dinner tonight. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's fun to have someone to cook for. You didn't invite... Anyone else in the station, did you? No. Good. You know, Ted, the other day I was sort of going through the company rule book, and uh, uh -huh. I didn't find any rule that says two employees can't fall in love. Oh, really? <laughs> so I was uh, wondering why you told Betty that. <laughs> well, I, I thought it was this company. Maybe it was uh, another company I worked for. <laughs> Maybe it was the Navy. <laughs> well, anyway, if we don't have a rule like that, we should have. Why? Because it gets in the way of the work, and women just... Well, you know how they are. Isn't Betty sort of special? Well, sure, she's very special, but I start to think of where this could lead. Well, you know, marriage. I see us walking down the aisle, I see the minister, and I see the... Best man smiling, and I see my mother crying. Then I see this guy in the red nose and the orange hair and the baggy pants waiting to throw a pie at me. <laughs> Mary, I can't have a clown for a, for a father-in-law. Oh, Ted. What do you understand, Mary? I'm an anchor man. I've got a certain amount of dignity to protect. No, Ted, I don't understand. I mean, it seems to me if you really care about somebody, it doesn't make any difference who your father-in-law is. Tell that to David Eisenhower. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just don't believe that's your reason. Okay, Mary. I'll tell you what I'm afraid of. Uh, 
What if she, she really doesn't love me? I mean, what if, what if I get engaged to her and tell everyone and, and even have my engagement picture in the paper? And then she, <laughs> then she dumps me for somebody. I mean, how will I look? Pretty silly, right? Well, Ted, that's one of the chances you have to take. Well, that's easy for you to say. You've never been dumped by somebody. Ted, sooner or later, everybody gets rejected. Well, not me. You don't love somebody, you don't get rejected. You don't get loved, either. Well, I just... I just couldn't stand being hurt. Well, being hurt is part of life. It's part of love. Well, did it ever happen to you? Did you ever get hurt? Yeah, a couple of times. You have? Mm-hmm. Tell me something, Mary. You, when you got hurt, did it hurt? <laughs> yeah, it, it hurt a little. It was, um, a good hurt. I mean... It wasn't permanent or anything. I mean, uh, here I am. Ta-da. <laughs> then, then I could love her and maybe get hurt and maybe not, but even if I did, it wouldn't be too bad, would it? <clears throat> well, certainly better than holding it in. You know, I've been wanting to tell her I loved her ever since that first day when she leaned over me and looked in my eyes and scraped meringue off my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, then tell her. I will. You just watch me. The minute she gets here, I will. Oh, well, listen, Ted, you, you know, you don't have to do it in front of me or anything. Well, no, I, I've got to do it now before I eat. <laughs> right now. I love you. I've never had a man say that to me before. No, wait a minute. I don't love you. That's what they usually say. I don't love you either. Hi, Ted. Betty, I, I like you very much. In fact, you're a very pleasant person. In fact, you're more than just pleasant. You're, you're the most pleasantest person I know. In fact, you're wonderful. In fact... <laughs> in fact... Mary, I think we better leave the room before we hear the rest of the in fact. I think you're right. <laughs> in fact, I, I, lo I, lo I lo love you. Where's Ted Baxter? Uh, he's in the studio. When he gets here, tell him to come in and see me. I need him. Are you going into another one of those staff meetings? No, and if I don't see Ted soon, there won't be any more meetings. You know what I've got here? What? The results of the test on Ted Baxter's mustache. I'm glad they didn't test the rest of him. I'd never be able to lift it. <laughs> Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Right. Ted, here's the response to your mustache. Oh, how'd it do? Well, I won't bore you with all these charts and graphs, but this is what it boils down to. Hmm. 10% of the Minneapolis television viewers did not like it. Well, that means 90% of them did. No. The 90% never saw your mustache. They were watching the other channels. <laughs> oh, one of those tests know, anyway. Murray likes it, don't you, Murr? No, Ted. Mary? Uh, well, not... Lou? I don't care what anybody says. Betty likes it, don't you, Betty? Well, it, it does kind of scratch. Ha, 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 ha.